What's up, Chooch, out here on the Extreme Bull Commander. Met up with some people in Moab that were on some dirt bikes, and I decided I was going to try to keep up with them on the good old Extreme Bull Commander High Torque. And it actually was a total blast, guys. I had an epic time. Made a road trip out of it, going all the way to California. And this is just some... I, I really put some time into this video. I enjoyed the ride a, a ton. I enjoyed the road trip. Everything about it, guys. And there's more to come. So I rode more trails out here than the one you're seeing. And the one I rode after this was absolutely incredible this so this was just a little kind of a dirt bike trail and whatnot nothing really steep i went over to where they take the 4x4 jeeps after this and the high torque commander was i'm not going to spoil it for you but that is an incredible video guys i really really um want to put time into editing that one and man that is probably going to be the best video i've ever filmed it seriously is freaking incredible but this is moab utah this is my first time ever going to moab utah and i was just on the way back going down interstate 70 heading back to colorado and i really honestly this was kind of a bad thing to do because if i'd have kept going i'd have avoided the snowstorm <laughs> But I ended up stopping here, riding all day, and then getting stuck in the snowstorm on the way home. An epic snowstorm, guys. I'll show you right now. Check this out. This was riding up Vail Pass right here in extreme conditions, guys. And I had a two-wheel drive pickup truck, and it was not good. It was, it was like, dude... I'm good at driving. I've drove go-karts and stuff all my life, and if you're not confident with that, like, when you start sliding sideways and stuff like that, it would scare a lot of people real bad. But, like, dude, I had to oversteer, and, I mean, I was drifting straight up on the on the interstate, and the only other vehicles were FedEx trucks rolling out because they had to quota to meet and they had to get where they had to go. But anyways, it was honestly pretty slow going the whole way through that but i made it with no problems and, and that's good so the only thing was it just took forever man it just took forever driving that slow in it so and a lot of people that stopped and just waited that's just i don't know I, i'm one that keeps on trucking if i can and it was almost even better because there was like pretty much no traffic so if you can drive through it you got absolutely no traffic on the road just cruising Check that that spot over there. The commander uh, rode up that. The high torque commander rode up that little like hill that you what? see with the black spot on it over there. I went over afterwards so, and rode that. I'll I'm show y'all in the like next the video. It's pretty wild. The, the next video is going to be all like hill climb type stuff with the high torque. Just climbing extreme hills and everything. And as I follow like really cool jeeps and whatnot, it's sweet. But this is the riding spot over here. I'm just going to send it. I already paid my money. You just pay five bucks over there at the entry gate, and then you can come ride dirt bikes. You can ride, like, really whatever, man. It's really, honestly, really cool. And the fact that, like, the guy asked me, he's like, hey, man. He's like, what, what like, are you hiking? You riding? What, like, what you doing today whenever you come into the little uh, booth? I was like, I'm on these uh, things called electric unicycles. He's like, oh, he's like, those things are awesome, man. And I was just like, like I was like, kind of stoked that he knew what they were, and, you know, it was was cool about it so definitely if you want to go ride here it's five bucks and you can ride all day long and they are really really lenient and cool about it if you just clean up you know your trash and everything like that and make sure you leave it like you left it and that's basically it out here there's really nothing to tear up you don't have any any forest to tear up or anything like that it's just all all rock so they make you if you're have an ATV out here you need to carry like a spill kit with you which is basically if you damage your oil oil uh, pan or something like that and one of these side by sides and you start leaking oil you just need to have a spill kit to clean it up like cat litter and all that to put on top soak it up and then clean it up but other than that there's not really too many regulations out here with um, 4x4 stuff and off-road vehicles it's a haven for it it's Whenever I drove in into Moab, man, like if you've never been here before, it's really kind of off the beaten path. There's not a lot of people in the world that are going to end up over here um, in particular if you're not really trying to go to it. Um, it's not something you just pass by. Once you get off I-70, you got to go 
a l pretty long way. You go like 35, 40 minutes off I the interstate, and it doesn't look like much. It looks like you're just driving through absolutely nothingness. I'm talking like just barren desert, but it's some ugly, like, ugly, like, eastern Utah desert, and it just looks like there's nothing out there. And then you start going kind of like down in this little ravine, uh, the road, and it starts turning into like Red Rock Canyon. And then you dip down into the little town of Moab, and all you see is just the coolest Jeeps, 4x4 vehicles, and the hills are littered with trails everywhere. And everyone has like five dirt bikes, and a, I mean, the nicest side by sides. And the town's really cool, like a really unique vibe to the town. You got a few nicer new homes down there that are probably very expensive just because of the way that, I mean, places like this now where you can work online and you don't really need a downtown infrastructure that has, uh, you know, office buildings and stuff and you can live somewhere cool like this. A lot of people are moving there that can work online and they're just buying really, really um, they're, are building extremely nice homes and then those homes are just selling for astronomical prices and pricing all the locals out of moab and stuff like that which is like that with everywhere that's a cool place to live right now honestly like there's nowhere that is a cool spot that you want to live in the united states where the locals aren't getting priced out by people that are just simply um transferring the way they're they're working you know and you got a lot of people that just don't need to live in a city anymore and you can live in a very interesting place like this and if this is what you like to do Every day you can just wake up and get in your side-by-side -side or your ATV, your dirt bike, or get on your electric unicycle and go ride all these trails everywhere. All day, the weather's usually pretty good, and it's just a really unique spot. Like, it really looks like you're on a different planet. It looks like you're on Mars for pretty much everywhere that's not in the downtown area of Moab. It looks like you're on Mars. And yeah, there's some dirt trails. You got every type of trail, really. The only thing you don't have is, like, trees, which, you know, that's not really a big deal. And Arches State Park is about, I could ride to, you know, the Arches State Park, the world-famous arch you see on the, every Utah license plate, or used to. That arch is about 15 minutes away riding. I could get there in about 15 minutes on, the, on this unicycle if I really pushed it. And it's um, just right across the way over here. It's it, not far at all. And you can kind of see the terrain. This looks exactly like where that arch, it's, that famous arch in Utah, the same type of rock and area and terrain, the geographical terrain that that would be on. And it's because it's right around the corner. And it is very, I mean, this is such a, I, I, I am definitely going to go back there. A lot of people from uh, Colorado take road trips over there. And it's not an easy road trip at all because you have to go over I-70 and over the mountains. But it is really different once you get there. And you can just tell. I mean, it looks so different from the Rocky Mountains where I am. And it's only about five hours away. Five, yeah, about five hours away. Maybe even four, which is not bad at all. Great camping. Oh, and if you don't have any equipment, guys... If you don't have a unicycle, if you're watching this, you don't have an ATV, anything, and you just got an adventurous spark from watching this video, you can go there and rent anything you want for a reasonable price. Because they're not renting all this stuff out every day. If you're not going on a weekend or going during the summer, you can get incredible prices for your rentals on, on stuff out there. Because it's just sitting. They don't want their equipment just sitting there. They want it to be making some money. So during the week... You can go get the. You can rent a Jeep, a dune buggy, and and uh, AT like any of those things, man. I, I really would love to go for like a week. I could make a easy week trip here and just have a great time. Also, uh, lodging was relatively inexpensive as well. Uh, you can find really unique little hotels. Hotels like I like. I like a good clean um not i don't like the run down like motel that's not my vibe i like a, a unique lodge like something that's um unique in the way where they only have like you know 10 to 15 places yeah it's not the fanciest thing in the world but it's nice um has something unique about it and it's in a really cool spot that's kind of what i usually shoot for 
and I, I can usually find it. You know, if I if I really do a little bit of research, I can find it. And it would be basically like a little cabin, you know, off off the beaten path next to a river with like a, a um, continental breakfast or something like that. And it would only be like 10 to 15 rooms, like I said, you know, nothing like an actual chain hotel. And those are the coolest spots, you know, usually that I've found. And with the rating system on Google reviews and everything, you can find something that's nice and clean, but also unique and not just your best Western. So very, very cool trip, guys. I suggest getting out. See, these are some of the, like the rentals they have off to the side over there. Those are some, you can buy some nice ones, but kind of the same thing they have for, for renting if you, you want to get them. But incredible trip. I know I talked a lot more about the trip than the wheel this this time, but I have more coming up on the uh, Commander High Torque, and it's phenomenal. I really enjoy this wheel, and no complaints so far. It does what it's supposed to do. I went on my longest ride I've ever done the other day. I rode all the way from uh, the Front Range of Colorado to Ward in the mountains, and then rode down Peak to Peak Highway to Nederland, and then back home. And that was just crazy, bro. That was, this wheel blew my mind of the range you can get. So the reason you'd buy this wheel is simply for your long range riding. And I live in the mountains, guys. So the elevation eats the range. And I consistently climbed up a road the other day that went from about 5,000 feet in elevation all the way to 10,000 feet. So I gained 5,000 feet of elevation over about 25 miles or so and this is what that wheel is meant for it literally just chugged up it like a, i mean just no problem it didn't even hiccup one time just cruising along and the high torque got up every mountain corner every everything perfect the only thing it lacks on is speed guys but if you're a guy that doesn't want speed you just want range and to be able to dominate mountains this is the wheel you want to get and i'm going to show you all that coming up the real range and tests and all that talking statistics but this is just kind of a you know road trip vibe video and if y'all enjoyed this video throw the thumbs up and i'll see you dudes in the next 25 30 minutes away from here straight out that way i'm up on the hill up on the kind of in between big bear and apple valley and then they got a green day tribute band playing over here tonight and I got this place for $107 after tax in California. Awesome, dude. A room is honestly not the nicest, but for $100 in California, bro, this is dope. Check it out. They got, they're going to have a band playing at night, a tribute to Green Day. And then this is going to be like, so got a full bar in here, place to eat with epic views. Check out the views.